Woke up this morning with my mind Staying on Jesus Woke up this morning with my mind Staying on Oh, I woke up this morning with my mind Staying on Jesus Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah you know it ain't no harm to keep your mind. Say, on Jesus. You know it ain't no harm to keep your mind. Say, on Jesus. You know harm to keep your mind. Say, on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Well, you know the devil don't like it when you lie. Say, oh Jesus, you know the devil don't like it when you lie. Say, oh Jesus, you know the devil don't like it when you lie. Say, oh Jesus, Hallelujah. 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 Well, I'm walking, talking with my mind. Say, hey, oh, Jesus. I'm walking and talking with my mind. Say, hey, oh, Jesus. I'm walking and talking with my mind. Say, oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Let's give God a big hand of praise in this sanctuary today. It is good to be in the house of God. I'm going to ask Brother uh, Alan if he'd come and lead us in our uh, responsive reading. Ask that you would stand. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Was made. Yeah, it was right. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. The same came from a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. That was a true light, which lighteneth every man that cometh into the world. He came into his own, and his own received him not. Which is born not of blood, nor of the will of a flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. For God so ruled the world, but he gave his, his only begotten Son, that who believed him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent not his Son into the world. The end of the world, but that the Lord through him might be saved. As we remain saved, that's the only thing. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. 
successful contradiction that God is good all of the time and all the time God is good how many of y'all had a wonderful celebration in the past few days yeah. amen I'll tell you what I have been a wonderful time and uh, the hardest thing that I had to do was to keep from overeating You know, when you love to eat and the food is good, yeah. it's hard. But I uh, am glad to report today that I didn't overdo it. Amen. Amen. And so I'm feeling pretty good this morning. And I'm not 100%, but you know, I'm, I'm as the songwriter said, I press it on. The upward way, new heights, I'm gaining every day. Praying as I'm on with down, my prayers to the Lord will plant my feet on higher ground. So I'm grateful to God to see all of you here today. And uh, we trust that uh, God has continued to bless you. Sister Elder Nephew is coming and she's going to uh, say what she's going to say. And uh, y'all say amen. Amen. Morning. Good morning. Another good morning that our Lord has made. I know you're all happy to be here. Amen. Be happy, children. Amen. If not, just raise your hands and our ushers know how to take care of you. On our prayer request, we have Sister Cassandra Mikita, Ruth Bain, Mercy Jean Evans, Laura Butler. Elvin Welch, Virginia Vaughn, Donald Copeland, Reverend Layton White, 
Sister Maxine Whitehorn, Pia Schreiber, Evelyn Colbert, Charlene Higgins, Josephine Coleman, Pastor Hershey L. Hammonds Jr., and the entire First Baptist family. Amen. Come join us this Sunday morning at 9 o'clock for breakfast, then all of our Sunday school, then BTU. Remember, if you know the Bible, the Sunday school is in June. If you don't know the Bible, you need the Sunday school and BTU. We have our adult ministry mission statement. On the count of three, let's recite that together. One, two, three. To present the gospel to the Christ to the lost, bring them into Christ, build them up in Christ, and send them out for Christ. You can watch this service on Facebook and YouTube, but as we speak today, the New Year's Eve Watch Me service will be Thursday night, December 31st at 11 p.m. We will have our traditional first meal following the services for so you need any information to see me. But I think you have everything intact. We just need for you to show up. We need, we need for you to show up and invite someone else. Still think of that social distancing. And the 9th of January will be our annual church meeting. And it will be held at 5 p.m. January the 9th, it's on a Saturday at 5 p.m. Any visitors? No visitors. Thank you. Let's say amen. 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 Well, thank you, Sister Nephew, and uh, we will govern ourselves accordingly. Uh, I am, I'm not worried about a whole bunch of folks showing up here on New Year's Eve. So we'll have plenty of room in the fellowship hall. Uh, amen. We've been having plenty of room in the fellowship hall Sunday morning, so I'm not looking for a whole lot of folks to show up. But uh, we are just doing what we can do to uh, continue the program that God has given to us. Still practicing social distancing and uh, being as safe as we possibly can. Now, how many of you know that the Lord has blessed you? Let me see. So, somebody needs to testify today. The Lord is blessing me right now. Oh, right now. You know the Lord is blessing me right now. Oh, right now. You know he woke me up this morning and started me on my way. Hey, hey, hey. The Lord is blessing me right now, right now. Right now, well, we want to hear some good morning this morning. Come on, Carol, say good morning. Good morning. Uh, well, God has been good to me. Um, he was good Christmas, and then I, my young daughter didn't show up, so I was kind of worried about it. And I called and called, and so you know, all kind of things go through your mind when you don't hear from the child. So, again, the next day, uh, she found out so that she said she thought she had COVID. Oh. Well, I was thinking like when she told me she had found the job, I was so happy because she hadn't been working. I'm like, now what? She young, healthy morning, she working. And so she told me she was working at a nursing home as a maid. And I was like, what? You don't have no experience or what? So they just for help. So then she tells me that the patients had COVID and she thinks she had she had been running the fever. So, of course, I was worried again this morning. She found the house and she said, Well, mom, I'm feeling okay. She sounded fine. So, I've been praying all night because I was so scared. So, she can't be there for me. You know, can't look up. So, God bless me to let me in. Hopefully, she, I don't know if she'll take a test. But so far, um, I haven't caught my oldest daughter. I haven't caught my I've had friends that said they had, but they're doing fine and made it out of the hospital. So, I 
feel like that's a blessing to be in the So every day that I wake up and I'm here, it's a blessing. All right. Hey, that's good job. Good job. Y'all do not get a chance to take those boots out, she got on. Come on, Mr. Lockett. Say hello to us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. I am thankful to God for being here and being a part of a lovely family. Led by a lovely pastor and wife and family. I, I'm just open to it. all the blessings that God has given me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm amazed to know how well that I'm blessed. Yes, yes. And I thank him again for a beautiful pastor that leads according to God's will. Bless you. Come on, y'all, give God a big hand. Hey. 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 Amen. God, come on, y'all. Let's say amen for what the Lord. He woke me up this morning and started me on my way. The Lord is blessing me right now, right now, right now. God bless you. Let's give God one more big hand of praise. I am just so thankful and excited about what God is doing and he's keeping us. And uh, we're doing our best to uh, stay out of the way of the uh, coronavirus and doing our best to stay safe. And I want to thank Sister Hammonds for keeping the sanctuary uh, petitioned off where we can do our social distancing. Amen. She's doing a tremendous job of checking temperatures as folks come in. Uh, she, uh, she, uh, she, she, she makes sure you got your mask on. Amen. So we're thankful. God bless you. God keep you. And um, um, let's pray. All right, Father in heaven, we're so thankful for life's wonderful blessings. You are so good to us, and we are so thankful for the blessings that you have given to us. Now, Father, we pray, Lord, that you would forgive us of our many sins, and Lord, that you would renew within us a right spirit. Today, as we come in the midst of chaos and confusion that has engulfed our world, Lord, we know that you're still watching over us, and we know, Lord, that you still hold the world in the palm of your hand. So no matter what our leadership does, Lord, we have the assurance that you will take care of us. So, Father, we bless your name. And, Lord, we're thankful for your constant presence with us. And, Lord, every now and then you let us know in your own way that you're still with us. So, Father, we say thank you. Thank you for the various families that are represented here today. And, Lord, we pray, O oh God, that your mercy will continue to be upon us and help us, O oh God, that we may continue, Lord, to come together as a church family. And, Lord, in the midst of this chaos of, of, of coronavirus and COVID-19, Lord, you've been keeping us. And, Lord, there are so many, Lord, who have gone down because of the virus. But, Lord, you still let us be up. So, Father, we have to say thank you. And, Lord, continue, Lord, to guide our steps. And, Lord, may we continue, Lord, to keep our hands in your hand. For we know, Heavenly Father, as long as our hands in your hand, that you will guide us and keep us. Father, we bless your name. There are so many who are on our sick and shutting list. We are remembering today not only those who are listed, but, Lord, Sister Brenda Johnson, Brother Herman, and uh, Brother Jack, oh, God, and we miss them, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that your healing 
will continue to be upon their bodies. And Father, we do know that you're able to do exceedingly and above beyond whatever we can even ask or even think. So bless us today, Lord. And Lord, today, may your word go forth today. May Heavenly Father, something be said that will draw us closer to you. May we continue, Lord, to hide our word, your word in our hearts that we may not sin against you. Now, Lord, bless us now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Here's another song that I want us to uh, uh, look, look, listen to. Um, I've been trying to sing it. Um, yes, and um, I, I like that uh, uh, he's an on time guy. Anybody know he's an on time guy? And as soon as uh, I can get it in here and put it in there, and uh, we haven't used the SPA in, in a little while, so it's taking me a little minute to kind of readjust to it, but we, we're working it. Yeah. Amen. Okay, you know it, you join in with us. Oh, 
Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophets. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed and behold the star which they had seen in the east went before them until it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to heaven, they departed for their own country another way. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt. And it was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt 
I call my son, the word of God, for the preacher, for the people of God. I would want to tag the text with this subject. The star still shines. The star still shines. This past week, on December the 21st, many living in the northern hemisphere witness what is often called the Great Conjunction. The solar systems, the two largest planets, Jupiter and Saturn, came within planetary kissing range in Monday's evening sky. Did any of y'all go out and see it? This rare phenomenon lasted, last occurred in 16. 23. Much media hype was made over the rare uh, occurrence to the point that some even referred to it as being the Christmas star. If you missed it this year, the likelihood of you seeing it again uh, is very slim to none. For it is expected that it will only it will occur 800 years from uh, December the 21st. It's interesting, though, my brothers and sisters, to note that there was another rare occasion that occurred in the eastern skies over 2,000 years ago. Unlike the Great Conjunction, that occurred on uh, that occurred on December the 21st 2020 there was no media hype there was uh, no people standing on their balconies on rooftops gazing toward the western hemisphere there was no pomp and circumstances because this star seemingly to be going unnoticed only by a few people. Matter of fact, the star that appeared in the heavenly constellations was not seen by the masses of the population. The record is, according to Matthew 2, that this star was only visible to what Matthew refers to as wise men from the east. Now, the text does not give us uh, a clue as to how many wise men there were. It only says wise men. We conjecture that there were three because there were three gifts that were presented. But whether it was three or third, the fact is that they were called wise men. And these wise men, according to historical accounts, traveled for over a thousand miles. They traveled a great distance, and they were guided by a shining star. I have some news that you can use. The star still shines. Somebody know what I'm talking about. You see, this rare uh, guidance of a star was not just a star. It was divinely directed for a particular purpose. Now in Matthew's gospel, he wants to make sure that his Jewish readers understood the fulfillment of the prophecies surrounding the coming of Jesus. It had been predicted that a star would shine uh, indicating that the Savior, the shepherd of the people 
would be born, Matthew makes sure that his readers understood the the authenticity of uh, the coming of Jesus as being bona fide and qualified. And so in chapter one, he makes sure that the pedigree is intact. In chapter two, he makes sure that the prophecies is fulfilled. And so when we get to chapter two, and Matthew says, now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. He sends a signal message to his readers that God had performed his prophecies that had been predicted some years ago by the coming of his son Jesus Christ. Now, what I like about Matthew's gospel as I read it is that Matthew does not leave us to imagine who Jesus really is. Because when he says here that he is born king of the Jews, we don't have to worry about Jesus being made a king because he's already born a king. And so when uh, the wise men, uh, Sister Ellen and Nephew, when they got to town to Jerusalem, they felt like, well, the king is going to be at the palace. And so we might as well start at the palace. And when they went to the palace, they raised the question to Herod, where is he who is born king of the Jews? Now, this was somewhat intimidating to Herod because Herod is an appointed king by the Roman officials. He's not a full Jew, and so therefore any Jew that would be born would be a threat to his regiment or his reign. And so therefore the text said it disturbed him. But it didn't just disturb him, it disturbed the folk at Jerusalem also because they knew that there was going to be a king that was going to be presented. They understood that the prophecies would be fulfilled. And so what this reminded them is, is though even though we have a uh-huh, a we have a uh, what, what I like to refer to as an illegitimate king. Amen. There's going to be one who's going to come to the throne that's going to be bonafide and qualified. Yeah. Y'all know we've got some illegitimate, amen, amen. Uh, leaders, amen, they're trying to run our country. But I've got some news that you can use. That when God puts his stamp of approval upon a man, you might as well just go on and leave office and get out of your way. But nevertheless, what Harriet does is he calls his leaders, his religious leaders, to, to he calls them in order that they might be able to tell him uh, where would Jesus going to be born. Now, I said he was an illegitimate king because if he had been a full Jew, he would have known what the prophecies said. And so when these Pharisees and Sadducees, you know, they were the religious leaders, and if you had been in Sunday school this morning, Sister Lyons expounded upon the difference between the religious leaders of that time. But they got together and they declared that he would be born in Bethlehem of Judea. Now you've got to understand Bethlehem of Judea is important. He doesn't just say Bethlehem because there were numerous cities uh, named Bethlehem. But when he says Judea, it fulfills what the prophecy said. And so here they are letting him know Bethlehem is the place. But notice something in the text. The text says he calls a private meeting. And the private meeting, he wants to know, when did you first see the star? Now, now, see, his questioning, he has ulterior motives. And listen, you can fool some of the folk some of the time. But you can't fool God none of the time. And so here God is working behind the scene, orchestrating his plan for the safety 
of uh, his son. And so uh, the text says that after they found out where he was going, they left Jerusalem. And the text says that the star still shines. Look at the text. You see, what made them wise is that this star caused them to seek the Savior. Called them to seek the Savior. They didn't just sit around and, just, and talk amongst themselves as to what might occur. They diligently sought the Lord. Now, why is that important? Because you got a lot of folk who are sitting at home right now. Some of them are looking at me on YouTube and on Facebook. And they are not really seeking the Lord. You see, seeking the Lord many times takes you out of your own comfort zone. Many times seeking the Lord leads you into areas that you might feel uncomfortable with. But in order for you to get to the truth, you've got to put forth some effort in order to get in touch with the Savior. Somebody know what I'm talking about. You got a lot of folk who know the Bible and they sit on their porch and talk about the Bible, but they not really seeking the Lord. And so if you seek the Lord, you're going to put forth some effort in order to gain his knowledge, gain knowledge of him. That's why you got a lot of folk who don't want to read the Bible. They don't want to come to church. They don't want to give of themselves to the Lord, but yet still they will cry, I'm on my way to heaven getting out. Well, what makes a person wise is that he will spend some time seeking the Lord. I don't know about you, but I sought the Lord, amen, and he heard my cry. You see, putting forth some effort means that you have to generate some interest in yourself. Oh, I'm having myself a good time here today. Amen. Amen. Um, you uh, uh okay. And let me see if I can break it down. Y'all all y'all all came here via a vehicle of some sort, right? Uh, then none of y'all walk, did you? <laughs> and even if you did walk, you still had to put forth some effort to get down here, didn't you? Uh, amen. Now, you understood that God had something for you. All you had to do is just show up. All right. So that meant you had to dress up. You didn't really have to dress up. You could have just put on something, but you didn't want to disgrace the Lord and yourself and your family name. <laughs> So you put on some nice Sunday go to meet clothes. Right. Amen. Okay. Amen. You took a shower or something. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. You put on some effort, didn't you? Okay. Amen. And then your car don't run on fumes. It takes gas, right? Okay. So you put forth some effort to get here. The, 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 these wise men that had come from afar got there. You know, oh, we tell you how they got there. They got there one step at a time. Well, and some theologians believe it, they came over a thousand miles and they got there one step at a time because they understood that royalty was waiting for their arrival. They understood that that was going to be something that was going to be life changing. All they got to do is just to get there for themselves. And so my brothers and sisters, uh, wise men, what made them wise is that they went and they sought the Lord. See, you can, you can talk about it and you can understand that he's real. But are you really seeking the Lord? Are you really seeking his guidance? Are you really seeking his direction? Are you really seeking his relationship? 
Now that's a question that only you can answer. But then the second thing that these wise men showed the wisdom about is uh, they didn't just seek the Lord. They saw the Savior. Amen. Let, let's look at something here. Because see, Matthew doesn't give us a whole lot of details about the star. He just said the star shined over where the child was. He didn't tell us how, he didn't tell us about the dimensions of the star. He didn't tell us how the star traveled. He just said the star shined over where the child was. Now, they could have been content. These wise men could have been content with just knowing where Jesus was. Like some folk are content with knowing where the church is. But they don't go to church. But they are content with going, uh, just doing what they do. But notice that the text says, Brother Allen, is that when they left the palace, that the star shined over where the child was. Let, 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 let me see if I can read it for you. Because when you look at verse number 9, and when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they had saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding joy. Now, what made for an exceeding joyful experience? I'll tell you what. What makes for an exceeding joyful experience is when you know that God has not left you and that he's still guiding you. Somebody know what I'm talking about. You had to venture into uncharted areas. You found yourself in uncharted waters. And you was wondering, am I doing the right thing? But then God miraculously moves in your behalf to let you know you own the right course. Do you, you, can you remember the joy that you felt that when God gave you that assurance that uh, he was there with you? He was there with you to guide you. He was there with you to lead you. He was there with you to instruct you. That brought about some joy on the inside. As we began our series of study, we began to talk about the joys of Christmas. The joys of Christmas is to know that the star still shines and that God will still lead you and guide you every step of the way. Now, let me hasten to let you know that even though it might not be a star physically, there is some way that God gets your attention and moves in your own understanding. Do, do you remember when uh, God appeared to the shepherds out in, uh, yeah, on the Judean hillside on that Christmas morning? He related to them in a way that they could understand. When God guides you, he guides you in a way that you can understand. Don't, don't go outside looking for a star. I'm waiting for the star. No, you just <laughs> seek the Lord and ask him, lead me, guide me along life now way. But Lord, if you lead me, I will not stray. And so these, these wise men, they became filled with joy to know that God had not left them. Every now and then, my brothers and sisters, as a pastor, I have to depend on God to, to give me the direction so that I will know that I'm on the right track. And when God moves in such a way, it gives my heart joy to know that he's still in the leading God in business. And so I can stand here to testify without uh, any reservation that the star still shines. And so they, they didn't just yeah, uh, seek the Savior, but as I said, they saw the Savior. They weren't content until they saw for themselves. And notice something, and when they saw the star, they were exceedingly and with, filled with great joy. But guess what? They were on tiptoe 
anticipation. Because the text says in verse number 11 that when they were come into the house, they saw. Y'all see that? They saw the young child. Now, notice something, Carol. He's not a baby laying in a mansion. Mm -mm. There's no shepherds around. Matter of fact, there is no manger. Harlena, he's, he's living in the house. He's living in the house. I know sometimes we see the nativity scene with the wise men there to make no. They didn't get there that fast. Jesus is about two years old right now. He is not referred to as the babe lying in a manger. The text says they saw the young child. Now, that, now I don't get into folk, you know, if you want to put kings around your manger, see, that's fine. You can help yourself. But if you're going to be biblically correct, the text says that, that they, when they went in the house, now, I got to, but I got I to gotta kind of dip, uh, act this part out. It's because they didn't go into the house with the head hung down. They didn't go into the house with a somber face. You know how I know that? Because the text says that they were filled with exceedingly great joy. So when they got to the inside, guess what? They still rejoicing. And when they saw the child, the text says, with Mary uh, and, and the mother, their mother, and their joyfulness led them to worship the Lord because they saw for themselves. Ha have you ever met anybody from Missouri who lived by the store that's a show me state? I mean, you can say it all you want, but I won't believe it until I see it. They had not just traveled these thousands of miles just to hear somebody say, he's there. They had to see it for themselves. Let me see if I can break it down to somebody here today. It's because there is something about your relationship that ought to be so intimate is that nothing can sway you from your own personal experience. Oh, the hymn writer says something within that holds the rain. Something within that vanishes pain. Something within I cannot explain. All that I know, there's something within. And then it says, I met God one morning. Woo! My heart was feeling sad. My heart was heavy laden. I had a bow down here. He lifted my burdens and made me so glad. All I can say is that there's something within. And then he raises the question, have you that something, that, that burning desire? Have you that something that never does tire? If you that something, let the world know. All that you know is that there's something within. In other words, I'm not going to rely upon grandma's experience. I'm going to have my own experience. I'm not going to rely on the preacher's experience. I'm going to have my own experience. I'm not going to rely upon my co-worker's experience. I'm going to see it for myself. I don't know about you, but I... I'm seeking the Lord. And I know that my relationship is intact because I saw him for myself. What did he look like? Listen, my brothers and sisters, seeing takes on various forms. Amen. Takes on various forms. Yeah, yeah. Did you see it? Yeah, I saw it. What did it look like? All I know is that it's real. Real Jesus. 
Jesus is real to me. They saw him. Now, they saw him, they saw him, but guess what? Then they served him. Let's look at the text. It's because when they saw the young child with his mother, they fell down and worshiped him. Now, this might make some folk uncomfortable, especially those folk who are stingy and giving to the Lord. Worship always includes giving. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, they didn't travel empty hand because they knew they were going to meet the Savior. Oh, I just lost somebody right there. You know you're going to church Sunday. So you need to put back your offering because you know you're going to meet the Lord. Can I get a witness? Amen. Ah, you know you're going to the house of the Lord. Why are you going to show up empty handed? Have something in your hand that you can offer to the Lord. Because true worship always involves giving. Because God gives to you, you want to reciprocate and give back to the Lord. The text says, now notice something. They fell down. And worship him. Yeah, yeah. They didn't allow their pride to stand in the way. They didn't allow uh, their pedigree to stand in the way. They didn't allow, uh, yes, uh, their status to get in the way. Listen, when you come to worship, you don't care who's around. Because when you come into the presence of the Lord, you come with a humble heart. You come realizing that Lord is just me and you. I don't care about the mother folk. I'm gonna get mine. If they don't get there, I'm gonna get mine. And they fell down and worshiped him. But notice something. Then they moved from the worship of the, of the divine child to the giving of the child. Now, I said earlier, worship involves giving. But notice something. They opened their treasures and they began to present him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, gold is a, 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 a representation of royalty. Okay? Royalty. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 you go into the king's palace, you, you want to go with the best you got. So they had gold. Amen. They didn't go by Dollar Tree. No, no, they didn't go down to five, five and below. <laughs> they came with some stuff, some good stuff, some gold, and then some frankincense. Yes, this smell this, that was taken from the bark of, uh, of trees that, that was known to be in royalty. And uh, when you walk in somebody's house, you smell frankincense. You are, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm stepping in some high cotton here. Amen. They, yeah, they, they, they had some, some, some good stuff. Amen. And, and they didn't recycle some gifts. <laughs> some of y'all waiting on the next party because you got some stuff. And you already know what you going to do with it. You're going to pass this off. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but then they have some mirror, which was used for embalming purposes, smelling aromas and so forth. Now, well, why did you tell us all that? I'm glad you asked. It's because God knew that Herod was going to go on the warfare. He knew that Joseph was going to have to take uh, Mary and the baby down to Egypt. 
And if you ever travel, it takes money to travel. You ain't just going to get up and go and ain't got no money. And so here they are. They've got the resources to make the trip. Now, if you're going somewhere and you're going to stay there for a while, you're going to show me some expense money. Somebody don't talk about it. If you don't go to where you don't understand what I'm talking about. But if you go somewhere, you understand you can't go nowhere broke. And so look at God working behind the scene in directing yes, the path of not only uh, these three uh, these wise men, but also uh, the life of Joseph, who is the head of the house. And so Joseph is uh, appeared to in a dream, and God tells him, take that child and the mother, and y'all get on out of town and get down to Egypt. And stay there until I tell you it's time to come home. And so they served him uh, with, uh, with, with the resources that was needed uh, for the travel ahead. Listen, my brothers and sisters, I got to close this right here. But the star still shines. Because God won't lead you where his grace won't keep you. I've got to close right here, my brothers and sisters. It's because when you seek the Lord, and when you are determined, you're going to see him for yourself. You can't help but to serve him. And you know what? When you serve him, it is a testimony that you satisfied with what you have experienced. How many of you all are satisfied with what you experienced? These uh, wise men demonstrated their satisfaction when they opened their treasures and began to pour out their gift to this child, understanding that yes, he is the one that's born king of the Jews. Yes, he is the one uh, yes, that came down to 40 and two generations. Yes, he is the one yeah, that the prophets had told uh, that would come. Uh, yes, he is the one. Uh, yes, who disrobed himself. Yes, uh, and came down uh, as a little child. Yes, this is the one that we have marched for a thousand miles in order that we might be able to see him for ourselves. Well, my brother and sister, I got a close right here, but I'm so glad that the star. Yes, yeah, still shine. Every day ought to be a day that we ought to say, lead me and guide me every step of the way. Yes, yeah, the star still shines. Every day ought to be a day that you say, yes, Lord, precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, and let me stand. Ah, every week, uh, but thou art mighty. Lord, hold me with your powerful hand. I got a problem right here. But you know what? Now we the rest of the story. Is that when you think about the mirror, when you think about the environment, it was an indication that one day he would die. And in the words of the late Glenn Burley from Guthrie, Oklahoma, who penned the words uh, to born to die. Jesus came to die for the sins of the world. Yes, uh, every now and then I'm mindful that you can't just take Jesus out on uh, Christmas Day, wrap him in swaddling clothes, and then pop him out again and put him on a cross during uh, Easter time. Uh, he wants to lead you and guide you every step of the way. But Jesus did die on Calvary. Jesus did suffer and bleed for my situation. Yes, Jesus did uh, give up his life yes, uh, for the sins of the world. But I'm so glad that's still there because they made him a power to and he on that Friday night and saved the on that Friday night and Saturday but then uh, Sunday morning uh, got up with all power he got power to keep leading me and that's why I say the star still shines I'm done there might be someone here who would like to unite with the Lord's church by letter Christian experience or as a candidate for baptism. You might be here today and you want the Lord to come into your life. You will just simply ask.
God to come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. Lord, I receive you as my Savior. Thank you, Lord, for coming in. In Jesus' name I pray. It's just a simple prayer. A simple invitation to invite him to come into your life. Once you are saved, you ought to be a member of the church. I don't know who I'm talking to out there. Maybe somebody who is listening on Facebook or on YouTube. But today is a mighty good day to get right with God. I'm going to ask that you would join in as we sing a little song. I am weak and I need your strength and power to help me over my weakest heart. Lead me through the darkness thy face to see lead me oh Lord lead me lead me guide me along thy way for if you lead me I and I stray. Lord, let me walk each day with thee. Lead me, oh Lord, lead me. Thank you can see the presence of the Lord. The stars still shine. We are now to the point of worshiping and our giving. Man, here's my. This is the last Sunday offering that we'll take uh, for this year. All right, Brother Allen. Our Father and our God, as we come in prayer this morning, we want to thank you for taking us this day. Thank you for another Christmas. We thank you for the one this year, Father. We ask you to continue to bless the family here today. We bless those who are faithful. If you're going to the new year, Father, we ask you to behold us and bless us. We just thank you for the God you are. Thank you for what we have done, what you're going to do, Father. Continue to bless your people. And so we again bless us often for may be used for purposes of the sinner, Father. Please bless me as you send me, Father. Amen. 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 The Bible says, given it shall be given unto you. Good men and press down, shaken together. And running over shall be given unto your bosom. For with the same measure you meet without, it shall be measured unto you again. The Lord loves what kind of giver? Cheerful. 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 Amen. As we stand together, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, all of ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Amen. As we prepare for our benediction, let me thank Sister Wanda for being back on her post today. She fixed an outstanding breakfast this morning. Amen. We are thankful for her service that she renders here in the Lord's Church. Amen. Amen. And, uh, um, Okay.
Yandi Kshin. Dear Father, we're thankful for the demonstration, the illustration that the wise men showed over 2,000 years ago. Lord, they saw you as their Savior. They were not content with just knowing where you would be born, but they had to see you for themselves. And Lord, once they saw you, they couldn't help but to serve you through worship. And then, Lord, they demonstrated their satisfaction by the gifts that they gave to you as the Savior. Lord, help us, Lord, not to be content with just knowing that you're there. But, Lord, that we put forth some effort to seek your will to be done in our lives. That we will continue, Lord, to strengthen our relationship with you on a day-by-day -day basis. May we continue to serve you in our worship. And, Lord, we are satisfied with you knowing heaven the power that you will walk with us every step of the way. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with us until we meet again. May we say together, Amen. Amen. Okay. 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 Okay.